back to Dennis Deep Cuts. Today I have a special guest, uh, Mr. Brendan Kenty. How does it feel to be the new guy in fake names? The newest guy in fake names. <laughs> the exploding drummer syndrome. <laughs> it's been great. We've yeah. had fun. Yeah, we've, we've played a, a full lot. eight shows, right? Is that right? Yeah. Or that six, is, or well, nine it's seven. We, we do the eighth tonight. Eight tonight. Well, yeah. it doesn't matter for you people, but it's, it's the Anyways, eight Anyways, it feels like an accomplishment. It feels like it's been going... Really well, and uh -huh. the shows get better every night, and people are showing up, which yeah. is great. I get to see old friends. I get to see old friends in the van. I get to see old friends in the crowd. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I love it. How long has it been since you played fast drums? Well, aesthetics, we do play fast drums, but right. it's it's you know it's more <laughs> of the jazzle variety. The, the jazzle fast drums. <laughs> exactly. It's a little. It's a little. Uh, I mean, we definitely have we definitely have fast songs, um, yeah. but the straight up hardcore beat, yep, is yeah, it's been a little while. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. But yeah, it's, yeah, but I love it. It's That's been cool. Totally That's fun. great. Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's, I, I want to talk to you about when we uh, we we were in the car going to Philly, and we talked about um, the difficulty in maintaining a career that fluctuates quite a lot. Yeah, because that's we all been through that, like. One day you're like you come to town, you treat it like the king, and then the next time you come to town, people are like, ah, who are these guys again? You know, and and we talked about how do you maintain your sort of balance and focus when yeah. that fluctuates that much, and you also, you're also one that played in. I mean, you just got put out there. One of the most popular indie bands of of the '90s and early mm -hmm. 2000s, mm -hmm. and but that also fluctuated. You told me that that wasn't always like because I mean. The, but intentionally, I mean, intentionally. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, but but also from, yeah. from I think the the perception from the outside was like Fugaz was super popular. It was a smooth. Ride well, we, the whole we, way. we did become. I mean, I think we did become relatively popular, like really fast. Probably, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but we certainly played a fair number of smaller shows all the time. Yeah, like we would we would play in between shows. In Bozeman or where you know like smaller towns yeah, yeah. you know and it's important to, to do that yeah, all the time sure. you can't just play the They're, five the, the arenas <laughs> yeah no well, not even arenas I, I mean it's just like the cities you know it's like yeah. really super important to play everywhere I think I, I and, and I'm and fully and, with you on this and there's people everywhere and yeah. you want to be you want to be able to like communicate with people everywhere and you want to be able to meet people everywhere yeah so and and it's um you know as a as a a second place you know finisher on the east coast to new york all the time dc i you know i'm i it used to be that people wouldn't come through dc at yeah. all you know yeah. so i'm i was really I I really think it's super important to play wherever you can. I also, you know, at this point I'm 57 years old, like there's people, there's friends of mine all over the, all over the place. Yeah. But I've never really thought I actually have never really thought of it as like <clears throat> in peaks as peaks and valleys. Yeah. Cuz it's more like you're growing you know, you're growing the band. You're growing yeah, yourself. Yeah. Like so to me like actually like getting it um like even this band, yeah. Like, sort of like making bread. You're creating proteins that kind of we're all going to rely on as a memory bank and as yeah, as yeah. our own personal histories together, you know, or it's our true. histories as as a group. And so we'll refer back to things that we've done. And one yeah. one of the important things is to play, you know, uh, I mean, dance studios in Oxnard. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean that's it's a, it's a we very, will never forget. No, that. no. <laughs> that we will never forget. I mean, it is easier to forget the shows. They're like just the regular club show at a town. You're like, yeah, it was fine. But, yeah. But then when you do play a floor show in Oxnard at the tender age of 57, mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, I'll remember this. I'll remember it. I yeah. remember the ones. I mean, it's 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 could be disingenuous to look back and 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 remember with fondness all the great small <laughs> shows you played with in Fugazi, and not want to be there. Now, yeah, yeah no. I love them just as much now as I did. No, no, on, I just, truly. I mean, I, 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 I was kind of at my most miserable state when Fugazi was at its biggest, <laughs> which is so ironic. But I would like we were because mostly because I felt like the direct communication was falling away. 
from, and it was harder to, to, to get a grip on like who was out there, All right. who was in the crowd and sense. stuff, you know, yeah. and I was, it was becoming less of a personal exercise of sort of knowing your audience and, and kind of like um, having a, a dialogue that made sense to you as a, as a writer, as a yeah, artist, a as a performer, yeah. you know, and, 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 and the other thing is a lot of times <clears throat> we would go into these big rooms like a hockey arena and play a hockey arena that was not made for music no, and, it no, and horrible we could and, uh, not make it work. I mean, yeah. to me, I was like, you know, I was like, what the fuck happened, man? <laughs> like, this is like not at all what I, that's not really what I, I like to do yeah. at all. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody, lo- I mean, I don't know. No, no. They, but- they certainly, there's certainly the converse of that where, <clears throat> you know, I know people, work those rooms yeah. and i've been to great shows yeah. like that but, i've but seen I, ba- the great bands be great in yeah. those rooms and 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 i bet and we probably and we have been great in in those rooms yeah. and fugazi was had good moments too but there was there was this um where i felt like we were like a little bit pushing rope you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we couldn't quite make it happen i think there's something to be said because i mean I, i've played those those venues as well and you're like this is not a music venue but there's something i think the bands that reach just that level there's something about adulation that just uh, it's very you know a- addictive to be on that level yeah. and have those that that amount so at that time of, in know, my life i viewed it as poisonous that's kind of the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Addictive yeah. or poisonous, you know? But <laughs> yeah. would you say, because one of the things that I remember refused in, in the 90s. What, and it makes me sound kind of ungrateful. No, no. But it's, but it, and yeah. I did, I was grateful, but it was like, psychologically, it's hard to be up in that space. Yeah. Where and, people and love you. Where people you love yeah. you every day and, yeah. and you're just, people are paying to see you every day and people yeah, yeah. are coming, you know, it's like, it's it felt started to feel to me like really unhealthy, you know, especially yeah. when I was I was like having a world of real life happening, like people dying, having babies, yeah, yeah, all this yeah. other stuff, and so that just that disconnect was almost. I mean, I think for me it was too much to to bear. Oh yeah, yeah. I can see that. Hmm. Also, one of the things because um, refused when we played in the '90s, by no means as as popular, but I remember like I'm sure I, you played to bigger crowds than we ever played to. Not in the nineties. Oh, not in the nineties. Well, okay. nowadays, you know. <laughs> right. No. But, yeah. No. But but I was gonna say like one of the things because <laughs> when you were young, I mean, you you hinted at like having a family and there are all these changes. Mm-hmm. But I, I remember like being very young. I'm so up in myself that I had a hard time enjoying even the small shows because I was always like worried about stuff and I'm I'm quite I was quite tense. Oh yeah. And I had a really hard time enjoying. The fact that we, when we had good shows, there was always something else on my mind. Yeah. And it wasn't until later in life where I could sort of yeah. sit back and be like, yeah. this is fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, and are you there now? I am there now. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. now I love it. Like every show. I love every I show. I try to be in the moment. I try to yeah. be like present. I mean like, but when I was young, I had so much angst and anger. And I was mm-hmm. always like, there was always something that prevented me from being in that moment and being happy. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe that was the same for you. Cause you're like, you know, well, I really loved playing. Yeah. I mean, I was like, not, a, 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 I mean, at the beginning I was still learning how to play drums, honestly, like to, in with, but after a while, after playing like super long shows for a long time, it, yeah. you know, I think it kind of, it kind of came to me, but, um, but I always loved, I love the playing. Yeah. I do. I really, I mean, that's part of it as I really loved. And I love playing in Fugazi and I loved, I love playing in all, all my bands. I think <clears throat> Death Fix was where I was playing guitar and singing was the only time I was like really uncomfortable. But, and that yeah. might speak to what you're talking about. Like yeah. being a singer is just, you're really, you're, yeah, the, your balls you're, are you're very exposed. Yeah, yeah. Totally <laughs> up, man. I, that's why, honestly, I like my job. And on stage every night, I think is like to like to support you, like to really to listen to you yeah. and support you and carve around you, you know, like dig, you know, trying to make the space and the rhythm for you to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's like to like, and that's the same with every singer. Anytime I'm in a band, I'm like, I think about the singer a lot. That's you know? cool. A lot of drummers 
think about themselves a lot, I think. Some, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. But there's a lot of like, because yeah. I think that any well, time. It is a really weirdly technical. I yeah, mean, it it's, and it's a yeah. very physical instrument. Yeah. It's If you compare it to a guitar player and bass player or whatever, yeah. drumming is super physical. I mean, <clears> drumming <throat> and singing in that sense, yeah. they're very physical. The <clears throat> body, you work with your body in a way that, that the others don't really do as yeah. much, I think. They're acoustic instruments. Yeah, so, I, yeah, so, so it's a bit, it's a bit, that um that dynamic is quite interesting. Yeah. But and, and a lot of drummers and I think this is I mean not a lot of drummers, but there's definitely drummers out there that um don't compliment the song, but they mm. wanna show people how good they are at drumming. Uh -huh. Which is I think I mean, the few times I've helped produce bands that's always been like, no, play simpler, play to the oh, song, yeah. play <laughs> That's with, one of the great yeah. um the great uh ironic things about drumming or one of the horrible ironic things about drumming is that if, if you really get into the business of making your records if you want them to sound great you've yeah. got to stop you got to dumb it down yeah you got to stop showing <laughs> off it's a real problem <laughs> that was a real issue it still is a real issue with me but, but then with the aesthetics you get there's a lot of uh there's a I lot do. of shit happening in but that we band. recently added James Brandon Lewis as a saxophonist on our next record and yes that recording process was really interesting because I had to, uh, he's more like a singer because it's yeah, cause another he did, acoustic the instrument. He takes up a lot of space. Yeah, a lot of yeah. space and it's loud and it's, and, and, and I felt like I could duck back into more of a supporting role in it. It made the job a lot easier and it made the record a lot better. Yeah. And so it's like a different, it's a whole other kind of record. That's um, cool. Out in January, I think, or February. Um, um, so, yeah. Speaking to that, mm -hmm. we're going off topic here, but that's fine. We, we, we go where the conversation needs us to go. Yeah. What we, is your favorite drummers? Uh, I like, I, you know, I, I, they're all, they're not all jazz drummers, but they're, but Tony Williams and yeah, of course. Elvin Jones. But you're not you know, a Phil, Phil, Rudd, Phil Rudd type of guy. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I, I like <laughs> ACDC. I like Phil Rudd. Okay. I mean, but you I, know what I mean? He, Cause he's a drummer that, is insanely no, I mean, precise. I love Bonham. Yeah, and I grew yeah. up. I played drums because I loved Keith Moon. You know, I mean, uh, that's of course. And and uh, Keith Moon doesn't make it simple though. He's not. He wasn't interested in him. No, but he showed off. You know, <laughs> he I mean, showed he off like, all the and time. he made. He was like the leader of that band. In yeah, a yeah. lot of ways. I mean, I know he wasn't the leader. Pete, no, Pete wouldn't let. But it, <laughs> um, but he was. He was. But like, he had a yeah. really awesome bass player next to him. Yeah. That laid a foundation that he could just fucking. He like he was. Entrance was the jungle gym that. Yeah, yeah. That Keith Moon could play on. You yeah, know? yeah, for he sure, was, for sure. Yeah, so, um, but you know, it's all the usual guys, honestly. Um, but um, has there always been an influence? I mean, because I get, I assume when the you jazz stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I always, I would always go. I mean, I grew up listening to. To uh, to that music, I right. mean, to a lot of jazz music. I used to go when I was a teenager. I used to go to Blues Alley by myself to see these guys. I saw because the other I saw Elvin them. Jones. Yeah. I saw you know Tony Williams. I used to go to like there's shit in D.C. all the time. Like at the Jazz Educators Convention, I'd hear about things and I'd go down. And I saw Louis Belson. I saw Max Roach. I saw all those guys whenever I. Oh, that's you super know, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was. Um, it was really great. I mean, it was really great to be like, and if you go to, like back then, if you went to those, I mean, Blues Alley's still there. You can, we play there now, but it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, it's a real old school you jazz supper circle. club. Oh man, I can't tell you. Like when we first, when we actually played Blues Alley for the first time, it, I was like, it was a huge deal. That's all. Awesome. I mean, that's because beautiful. I was literally like, you know, like a, you know, yeah. like a fucking 17 year old kid, like looking, you know, watching. Yeah watching uh elvin jones you know getting the wind blown back on my hair when elvin jones was playing right in front of me so all that you know yeah that stuff is that's that's and tony williams you know i still like go out and you know i still listen to him all the time that's cool yeah try to yeah. emulate him all. i mean everybody does of course that's the thing yeah because he's course. a fucking monster you but know? what he did so, everything so when you were young because i assume you were into punk at this time yeah but you were like, I love these drummers. No, no, yeah. no punks wanted to go with you to the Well, okay, so <laughs> punk drummers. I mean, there's great punk drummers. Too. Of course, I mean, of there's course. There's like, you know, Earl from the Bad Brains was somebody who I like literally could not. I mean, that's really like when I play with you, it's like, 
and play the fast stuff, I'm really channeling Earl more than anybody. I mean, that I tried, beautiful. you know, a little open hat. And yeah. He, I mean, they were real, I mean, he was just fantastic. And those shows changed my life, you know. Um, you know, so Dennis cool. Thompson from the MC5. Of course. Machine Gun, a, a hero of mine. Um, and you played me that Gigi Allen track with him on it. Yes. Like, Who the fuck's this? Yeah. And it was like, you heard Dennis it. Thompson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's also, I mean, if that's one of your drummer heroes, <laughs> young, and then they get to play in the MC50, mm. that's pretty wild. Yeah. It's a wild and I think he was pissed off. Full, full circles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was a dream come true, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I like grew up. I mean, I there are a few bands that I collected all their shit. Yeah. You know? yeah. And MC5, I have everything. Um, everything. Plus, I have rare shit. I have <laughs> stuff that even Wayne doesn't have. And it's... Um, um so yeah to get to play in that band was, was great and to meet you know to get to play with kim thyle and billy gould and that's uh, right marcus durant yeah um, yeah it was uh but so that was a dream come true and you know wayne's a real player yeah he's, I mean, he he's the real I mean, deal he's the real he's deal, the real deal. Yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. so wait, his tone and just the way he, he digs in and the way he elevates the band is really like that's a real thing that's fantastic. Where he would take us in, 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 in the rehearsal room and on stage every night and behind stage and before we got up on stage, he's like, okay, we're being just, don't forget to run on stage. <laughs> <laughs> but it was even on that, you know, we were doing yeah. like the Sun Ra, you know, uh, Sun Ra stuff covers and oh, wow. Ray doing in, in rehearsals, we were doing Ray Charles covers. He was just throwing stuff at us all the time that he's like really trying to get us there, you know. That's so cool. It was so cool. Yeah. It was a really great experience. Experience. Yeah. And then um, as sober members of the band, we were in the back, you know, like, and I just ply him for stories the whole time. It's kind of how fake names operate as well. But I'm the one. Yeah, playing. you're the guy. <laughs> like, flying stories. stories. Totally. I could, I know so much about all your childhood friends now. <laughs> yeah, you met every, you, I met you're most, collecting yeah, fire collect, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also just like. There's these weird characters that was not even in the punk scene that I know way too much about right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. But that's so cool. So how did you get that gig, the MC50 gig? I was, I was, uh, uh, I went to a prison reform, uh, okay. uh, benefit and, uh, and I met and I went up to Wayne there and I just said, Hey, if you ever need, I mean, Number one, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I, love you I know you're married. Uh, <laughs> I've always loved you. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, I'm your stalker. Um, and um, and then and then he we did we did a we we threw a prison or jail guitar doors. Initially, mm. it wasn't a jail guitar doors thing. It was like more because DC is like a you know you have these pe different people come together for for um to for prison reform or for yeah, whatever yeah. What, you know like if, and they you bring people together to to try to make some movements so mm. end up at talks and things like that but they um but that out of that we threw a um, a um a night where a lot of different people came up and performed and and, and for money to for jail yeah, for yeah, his for jail yeah, yeah, course, for his yeah. jail guitar doors program and um that was, uh, and so we, so he and I and Mark Cisneros, mm, um, of course, yeah. were, were, were the backing band and then other people would come up. And so, oh, so, cool. so, so we got to learn a lot of songs together and we got to play together. It was really fluid, really fun. And then when, when the, um, when the 20th or the 50th anniversary yeah. was coming up, I was, I was like, you got to do something, man. This is kind of, you know, yeah. this is, this is your one shot to yeah. celebrate all this stuff. And he said, well, will you do it? And I said, yeah. And then we built the band. Then, you know, he you two like, built the band around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. It was super fun. That's cool. Well, he built the band. But yeah. it was definitely like, we, he was definitely, um, yeah, it was really great. It was very special for me that is to be able to be involved yeah. with all these people. So I've got a question for you. Um, <clears throat> when Fugazi stopped playing, yeah. I'm going to say that, mm -hmm. um, and you... I guess you were the one that more or less opted to be like, I'm going to be a family man. I'm going to do different things. Um, how, Cause were you ever afraid that you're going to lose that? Like the magic that music can bring you. Um, cause, cause I mean, there was something like 
you know, yes, you, you call some of the adulation a bit poisonous, but there's something about being in a band where you know that people are going to love what you do. And I mean, to start yeah, over... Yeah, I didn't, ne I didn't necessarily think that Fugazi was going to end forever. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, at yeah. the time. Yeah. But, uh, but at the same time, I was like, I, you know, I can't, like, we were going through so much... Like I really had my third. I had my third child coming. That's a lot, yeah. And my wife's dad had just died of a heart attack at sixty. Like, wow. like right, yeah, yeah, like that. And other parents were passing away, and you know, the it was just a, a it was an time. impossible yeah, thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, the first ten years, if you had, I mean, then we had a fourth child. Now I know that's my fault, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, that. Yes. but it, but it, um, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, looking back on it, I think it was the right. I also felt like, honestly, I felt like I needed to grow up. Mm. I needed to like this. And, and I was trying to get everything out of Fugazi. Yeah. yeah. Right? I'm literally like trying to get my, my, my friendship, my work, my, uh, you know, my, I mean, my creativity, my money, yeah. everything was coming out of this one sort of fucking killing it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was like making me resentful of that. I was That's like, not good. Well, you, well, you know, you're like, I, you know, come on. Like, and also Fugazi was, you know, had a set of rules that yep. we, we couldn't, you know, like Todd Berry has that joke where it's like, he's like, I, you know, I envisioned the, somebody coming into a Fugazi practicing gang, probably the drummer. And, it was the, and it's the joke. He goes, Hey, I got a crazy idea. How about six bucks? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shit, Todd, man. That's uh, he's like, it's a bit too on the money. Yeah, because six, six bucks plus the times a thousand people a night means I don't have to have a roommate when I'm 40. So, and I was like, oh, shit, Todd, that's so true. Like, I was just like, Go, how about, how about just a little more? Because, um, man, yeah, it was like that first 10 years of having four kids under 10, you know. Was, no, no, that, I see that. Like, I earned every one of these gray hairs, man. It was like, <laughs> really nerve-wracking it felt and i really was honestly i really like truly loved no no yeah the band to a point where i really didn't see us being like a different kind of band i mean yeah. and part of that came from me where it's like i didn't want the band to change yeah, yeah, yeah i didn't want it to be like oh yeah we'll fucking not write a record for five years and yeah. and also tour like three weeks a year I didn't mm -hmm. want to be that band. No, no. I, I wanted to be the band that, that we that, that we was. did for yeah, yeah. fucking fifteen years, yeah, which yeah. was like full on, yeah, you yeah. know, fucking tour hogs, yeah. man. I love that. I love that about Fugazi. Yeah. Because um, that something would change in the dynamics when when you become that band. It will like, we'll play some shit, you know, like the, yeah. it, it changes the yeah. complete dynamic, and then you become a legacy act. You yeah, know, yeah, you know, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather close the door yeah. than do that. You That's know? super cool. And That's so I think, cool. and I think it's, you know, I don't know. I think that was the right move, honestly. Yeah. Because it was like, it's like, you don't know, you don't really know what the story is no, of when, a band when, when, when until you, you finish yeah. that last yeah. page of yeah. the story. You know what I mean? Like, so you got to finish the book. You know what I mean? So to me, closing that chat, that last chapter was you know part and parcel of of like giving it the respect it deserves yeah. in a weird way so i guess maybe i did know in a way we weren't going to play together but i also felt like it was the right move yeah. at the time whatever but, it was but, but you were, it was hard yeah, yeah. i get that it was it's terrifying and hard super yeah. hard to be like all of it was terrifying yeah anyway. all of it all of being a 30 yeah four year old or 33 year old father of four you yeah know, with, i mean it's ridiculous trying yeah. to make things work and Talking then hard you know yeah because yeah. i mean even though you know fugazi was still like, like your steady game that was your yeah. job and then you yeah. have to like all right to where do i go from here you know, right I, I get that super scary but the, you you're all still really good friends totally yeah so that's yeah. a beautiful thing because i mean best friends i mean i yeah. still i still consider them all my best friends like you know i mean i I hang and play happily with Joe yep. all the fucking time. All the time. And I love Joe. And we're like the same. Like when we're on the stand, we're so different in so many ways. But when we're playing together, it's really like like one brain, yeah. honestly, which is so nice. 
Um, yeah, Guy, I see, you know, I play with him every once in a while, but really we just communicate all the time, That's you cool. know, about things. Yeah. Um, um, Ian, I see him talk to him all the time, yeah. you know, and, you, and well, you, Joe lives in DC as well. So there's still three of you that yeah, lives yeah, in yeah. DC. Yeah. 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 That's so, cool. And, yeah. Joe lives just five minutes from me. Yeah. So we practice in Joe's basement. That's right. Um, and, um, Ian lives, yeah, lives just about eight minutes from me yeah. over in Mount Pleasant. So. so, so being someone that, that, you know, we're a band in the nineties and I mean, I saw Fugazi 92 or 93 the first time, maybe possibly yeah. 92. Uh, and I loved your band, but then to try to be a band to maneuver all the logistics of being in a band. And then you had Fugazi is like, you know, the four bucks and we only do this. We only do it all ages. And then you want to be like that. And you're like, that's impossible. We're going to lose money. We get, you know, so it's like you set for a lot of us, a really impossible bar to reach to. And mm. we really wanted to be like, we want, you know, like we, I love Discord. I love like what you were doing. I love the ideology mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. And then you go on the road and you're like, no, we cannot be here. Yeah, like yeah, right. <laughs> you made it really difficult for a lot of us. Sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, I think I think I had my my wife's uh, grandfather came up to me. He's like, "I so I hear you don't want to make money." The first time I ever met him. I go, "Well, not really. I mean, that's not really the, the why we're doing this." But I was like, you know, you charge less money, more people come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it worked for Fugazi because yeah. there were so many people, and we were selling. If you like. 300,000 records yeah, every time yeah. and people were buying records yes, and shit, yes, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, it's, uh, no, I mean, you know, no, I, I, I we weren't getting get rich. wrong. I we weren't it. getting rich either. No, <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, but it we was couldn't like, do it. Either. <laughs> yeah. You look at that. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. My dad, I mean, I've been playing music for a very long time and, you know, always on the periphery of pop culture, you know, what we do like yeah. we're over here playing music and we make it work and my dad one time he's like 10 15 years ago he's like why can't you just write a hit right yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like that's not that's a not cover how the, yeah. the the crop pro, a cover of project mersh remember yeah. i got an idea let's make a hit record like make a hit record like that's not that's you know not i do a lot of video and i'm always like getting in these meetings where it's like people are like you know we need a we need to make a viral video. I'm like, yeah. oh, really? <laughs> okay. I, I, I had a meeting. Cha ching Exactly. Oh, good <laughs> idea. Yeah, that's I, I had a meeting with a record label once, and an early uh, we did an early invasion record. It's like a major label in Sweden, and they said so. The meeting was like, let's put the record out, and you see what happened. Then maybe you say something controversial. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, that's your marketing plan. I'm going to say yeah, something yeah, controversial. Right. They're like, I'm like, what's happening yeah. here? Yeah. There's a Bob Mould one said to me. Yeah. He goes, yeah, I think I'm going to put the record out and then go drive my Vespa into the Potomac. <laughs> <laughs> we have a that's, that's our publicity budget. That's one okay. Vespa. <laughs> That's not bad. I mean, it, was it might be a bit expensive. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why that is. And we're back. And After we're back. Um, um, so, um, one of the things that I find interesting with you is that you, you were like, I'm going to scale back. I'm going to start doing, because you start doing video stuff mm -hmm. when, when Fugasi stopped playing. Yeah. And so, you want me to just tell, run down what that was all about? No, no. Okay. But no, the, the oh. interesting thing is like now... You are the road dog of that gang, people. Right, but I also still do video stuff. That is true. I know that, but I you know what that, I mean. It, it yeah, is I interesting that you're like, doing something. But I, yeah. I like, but I like. My kids are older. <laughs> I, you know, three, three out of four kids have moved out of the house. They're all thriving, and um, makes like lovely easier. people. Yeah. And uh, my daughter is sixteen, and. Presently in a band with Alec McKay's daughter, which I met makes them. me so I met, happy. I met them at the, at the show in DC, <laughs> and uh, they're uh, and so yeah, it's just easier to leave. Basically, yeah, yeah. Easier to my leave. dog passed away after seventeen oh, years. No. That happens. It happens. I got rid he of my was, COVID. You a very old dog. I got rid of my COVID chickens, yeah. um, and <laughs> now we just have the cats left. All right. Um, so yeah, no, it's a pretty turnkey existence, yeah, as they yeah. say. You that's know, that's cool. 
Um, no, it's nice though. And I'm also working like, I'm not just like hawking my work. So I'm actually like people ask me to do things and I did a lot of projects over COVID. So I did a few records with people um, just cause I was itching to play yeah. and Mesthetics really weren't doing anything. Je Anthony had moved out to Monterey. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was like, Thanks. during COVID, yeah, he, he was really careful about stuff because he has some um, in-laws who were immune compromised. Oh, so yeah, yeah. he had to be really careful. And he mo moved out. He always wanted to live in Monterey. So he went out there for a while, was teaching out there. And Joe was teaching. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to do. And I was doing all sorts of video work yeah. during COVID. Um, and I did a few records. I collaborated with like, you know, different people like Mike, Mike, Mike Watt did some stuff and, mm. um, um, and this band Tunnel, who, um, the record came out. I like the record a lot and, uh, and your stuff. And, um, I don't know. Um, it was, uh, it was just feeling like kind of it felt the right thing to do to kind of honor some of those projects to actually let them like be on the road a little bit. Cause yeah, that's yeah. like the ultimate payoff of it, it recording is. a record is yeah. that you get to go out and, and, and play it out a little bit. And so, um, and you know, man, I mean, I was like, I last year, last spring I taught film at Georgetown university and I was like, couldn't, I said no to a bunch of stuff. And then, so I was like, okay, as soon as that gig ended, I was like, well, I don't really want to do that again, but I or not right now anyways, yeah. but, but I do want to get the fuck out of the house. And so I was like ready, you know, so then I kind of signed up for all this stuff, which just happened to dovetail yeah. into this nutty the, the spring. Fake, the fake names called Cam, you know, like, I'll, I'll, yeah, it's I'll fake names, board. hammered holes, mesthetics with James Brandon Lewis and, um, they just happen to all happen at the same time. So that's yeah, cool though. I've I mean, been on the road for, yeah. since February. I yeah. love it. So good. Me too. It's yeah. been great. It's been the shows. I mean, we're in this like really magical period of like post COVID happiness out yeah. there. People true. are so true. fucking happy to be out of the house and no, no one more than I. Yeah, no, I love it too. That, I mean, it was weird when you have, for me, I mean, my entire line of work is to play music and you know, it is like, we put out these records so we actually can make money when we go on tour and we can sell the records on tour right. and then we can get some money from the shows. And so the COVID was, I mean, it was horrible for most of us. And I didn't yeah. have like a, I didn't have another gig to fall back on. I mean, right. I'm sure I could do stuff, but uh, you know what I mean? But it, it's weird. Oh yeah. I can do some stuff. <laughs> I'm trying. No, I'm of course trying. you can. Yeah. But you know what I mean? I didn't, yeah. I didn't. So it was weird. And then now to have this opportunity, just like I'll, which to my bandmates a grin, like I'll say yes to every show. Right. No, <laughs> They're like, I can't do that. Like, cause yeah. a lot of the people that I do play with have kids and families and yeah, steady yeah. jobs. And I'm just the guy that's like, I'll, I'll play. Let's anyway. go. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go. You know? I'm down with that. So I try to say yes to everything too. Yeah. Then, but I don't I mean, always. Life's too short not to play music, you know, yeah, yeah. to travel and hang out. Well, I also like, um, I mean, I, I mean, just from, playing with Anthony and Joe and James, I'm much more of a be in the moment kind of yes. player now. Yep. So there's not a whole lot of, um, trying to play it right. It's more of I, like, I can hear it's, that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. it's more about just playing, just yeah, being yeah. there, getting, you know, getting just the like feeling. doing the yeah, exercise yeah. Of, no, that's, of, that's of, and, and communicate, you know, yeah. that's, just like the comfort of like being able to respond yeah, to, the, to, on, to yeah. the space and your environment and make the most out of it. But, but I love even that. Even backstage I, or yeah. wherever, just yeah. being like being, I don't know, yeah. just kind of accepting it all. Yeah. But I love that because there's something about like, I think, I mean, just talking from the, the shows that we play together, there, there's something fluent about mm -hmm. what's happening, which I really like. Fluid? And, yeah, fluid. Fluid. Yes, yeah, you know, but it, fluent. Yeah, fluid. No, fluid, but fluid, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, there's right. something about, like, every night's a little bit different, and it doesn't yeah. really matter. Right. And when you come to see band, I mean, I'm, I don't necessarily want them to be, like, every fucking note's perfect and the same as on the record. There's something cool yeah. about it being this, this live organism that changes slightly from night to night, depending mm. on our vibes, you know. Totally. And I think that's great. Well, it's still developing. Like we said yeah, at the yeah. beginning of the conversation, it's yeah. like, 
you don't know the band doesn't become the band until it actually no you know we, gets, we gets out there and exactly. plays more yeah. shows um right. yeah for sure I, there's this I mean, you have to make mistakes. All, yeah, yeah, all, sure. It's really important to make mistakes. Yeah. You know, and, and I think for us, it's like, I mean, this is this is. I think it's it's a super important slash interesting conversation when, when we are with the pedigree that we have, because it, it's like you know, there's a lot of fucking ex as, as an Irish. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, there there's a lot of ex Irish like, <laughs> <laughs> and. It would be, I wouldn't say easy, but it would be like, you know, we can go out there and play and then play some covers of our own bands, old bands and have, but there's something I think that's, that's, that's a common theme for everyone in this band that we want this to be the thing. Mm. We don't want the past to be the thing. Oh, I mean, yeah, the sure. past can get some people out of the woodwork to come mm -hmm. see us play, but then once we're on stage, we want this to be the fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. It's, the most important thing yeah. is that we're all that we're that it's happening now. Exactly, that's what yeah, I mean. Sure. There's there's something about that, yeah. and, and I think that the more shows we play, the more it's like it becomes apparent that this is a fucking this mm. is a real thing. It's not you mm. know it's like yeah we put together this super group to make some it's fast cash because that's <laughs> that's not happening. But but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, there, there's something I, I really love this about like this these like. You know, eight shows that we play. It's it's something that's mm -hmm. really happening, and, and yeah. it evolves. And I think if when when we write new music, it will you will you know definitely be affected by what mm -hmm. we're doing live. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna try to wind this up, but I'm gonna ask you because we're playing all these shows, and you're yeah. doing the Mastatics, and you're you're doing all these um, you know, the Hammer Halls. You're playing bass. Yeah, yeah. I think this might be the last tour I'm playing yeah. with Hammer Halls because Mary Timoney, I think, is. He's doing back, everything back in the fold. Back in the fold. Yeah. I hope so. But but um, do you ever miss those big shows with you guys? That's sort of like what you know what I, mean? I miss. I miss playing those songs. I miss that. The, I'm sad that those songs aren't. I know pe other people play them. Yes, and I get a lot of. I get a lot of that stuff, and I appreciate it. And maybe that's the best way that it should happen. Maybe, you know. Yeah. Um, but. Um, I, that's the part I miss it that I don't like the idea of shelving songs. No, I hear it. You know what I mean? It'd be yeah. cool to be able to play all those old songs. So that's really the, that's the only part that right. I really But miss. you don't miss the, cause I mean, we, we play and there's three people singing along and they're excited, but to have a room of. Oh, I love, eight, pe I love it when people are singing, people singing like yeah. Peter or something like that. That's, you don't yeah. miss that. I mean, I you guess. know, I get a lot of, that's weird. I get a lot of love off the aesthetics, like those That's shows. Good. Like people are really get, especially the ones with James Brandon Lewis. Like, like to me, I think that being on the cusp of like turning people on to new new music. That's quite exciting. It's really where it's yeah, at. It's very and, and so so. I mean, I get you know. I went to see Bikini Kill the other night, and it was like insane, and it was so good. And they were like, and the crowd was, and that is the crowd is the. Crowd is the barometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. they were losing their fucking minds. I would, and it was, I would too. I never seen Bikini Kill. Oh yeah, Robert they're playing Williams their last there. show tonight at the Mill and Mine in Knoxville. And my I don't think, my I don't think we can them. make it. <laughs> yeah, but my brother's out with them, and he's just in there. They're, you know, I think there's That's a lot so of. Cool. Uh, I think they're all sad that they're stopping right yeah. now, but I'm sure they'll keep playing. But, um, but so that. You know that's that's a beautiful thing. It is. I mean, like really, like that that, um, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's like yeah. raising raising the room and bringing people together into a room to sing along. That's a yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. I mi I miss that in yeah. a way. I mean, well, I guess, I guess we'll just keep working. Yeah, <laughs> make right. people sing see, along. See what time. happens. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, yeah. I mean, it is. You said Fugazi had. Uh, I wouldn't say overnight success, but you got successful kind of early on. Yeah. But they also, we also have to remember that the first European tour you did was like three and a half months long. Oh yeah, we worked. We so we, we worked. played. We yeah. played a lot. That's what I mean. So yeah. it wasn't like we put the record out and you were the big hype. It, it right. was you worked hard. Yeah. And I mean, I guess like uh, we'll just have to get out there work, and next there time go. we'll be back in LA. People will really say, like, "We're actually at the LAX." Airport hotel. Yeah. <laughs> near <laughs> on the fourteenth floor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I maybe that's it for now. 
That sounds great. Yeah. Thank you for, for being on my YouTube channel. Show. My pleasure. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, I've been nagging everybody to get on board with this. So. Easy and fun. I think I'm the last one, right? Michael Hampton. Good luck with that tricky one. <laughs> the tricky one. He's a slippery bitch. He's he's always like kind of dodging my attempt. To like Michael, let's talk about something. He's like, yeah. Yeah. One of these days. Uh, thank you so much for watching Dennis Deep Cuts. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you. See you in the pit. <laughs>